Before we get into some real calculus, we're going to review some basic concepts from pre-calculus. And we're going to start with graphing graphs of functions. So let's say that you were asked to graph y equals x squared minus 2. Now, one way to do it is just what I call brute force. And that's just setting up an xy chart. OK, so let me get my stylus going, x and y. and to be honest, most um, most action with functions happen around the origin. So I'm going to do, say, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So I put in negative 3, I'm going to get 9 minus 2 is 7. Put in negative 2, I'm going to get 4 minus 2 is 2. Put in negative 1, I'm going to get 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Put in 0, I'm going to get negative 2. Put in 1, negative 1. Put in 2, 2. Put in 3, and I get 7. So to plot these, I'm going to go to negative 3, 7. I'm going to go to negative 2, 2. I'm going to go to negative 1, negative 1. 0, negative 2. And you can see this has some nice symmetry, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And we get, surprise, surprise, a parabola. So when in doubt you can always just use an XY chart to get points for your graph. Another handy graphing tool is finding X and Y intercepts of a graph. So to find X intercepts you're going to set Y equal to 0. So that means I'm going to say 0 equals X cubed minus 4X and then I'm going to solve for X. So let's factor an X out and you'll see that we get the difference of two squares. Oh, getting ahead of myself here. And we have three x-intercepts, one at zero, one at positive two, and one at negative two. To get the y-intercept, you set x equal to zero. And so we get y equals zero cubed, minus 4 times 0, which is obviously 0. Okay, so we have a point at 0, 0. We have a point at 2, comma 0. And we have a point at negative 2, comma 0. All right, now, I'm interested in what's happening between the x-intercepts. So let's do an xy chart. And let's put in negative 1. Okay, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. And then negative 4 times negative 1 is 4. So I get negative 1 plus 4, which is 3. So I've got a point at negative 1, 3. And then let's put in positive 1 to figure out what's going on between these two. All right. I'm going to put in 1 cubed is 1. Minus 4 times 1 is minus 4. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And so what we get is a function that looks like that. So the first two functions that we just graphed have symmetry, all right? If you look up at our parabola, the left side of the y-axis mirrored exactly what's happening on the right side. Okay, that's called y-axis symmetry. You can have sym symmetry with respect to the x-axis, and it would look like this. Whatever is above the x-axis would exactly match what's going, oh, I don't know, below the x-axis. Now, the deal with something that has x-axis symmetry is that it cannot be a function because it fails the vertical line test. Okay, so we're not going to see x-axis symmetry that much. All right, what about origin symmetry? So in origin symmetry, whatever happens in the first quadrant has a mirror in the third, and whatever happens in the second quadrant has a mirror in the fourth. And you'll see that this has origin symmetry. Okay? All right, so how do we test for these symmetries? Well, to test with symmetry with respect to the y-axis, you're going to replace x with negative x and see if you get the same thing you started with. 
If you want to test for symmetry with respect to the x-axis, you're going to replace y with negative y and see if you end up with the same thing. And then to test for symmetry with respect to the origin, you're going to replace both x by negative x and y by negative y. So we are asked to test this equation for symmetry with respect to the y-axis and the origin. So to test with respect to the y-axis, we are going to replace x with negative x. So everywhere there's an x, I'm going to put in a negative x. Now negative x cubed is negative. So this becomes negative 2x cubed, and minus a negative x is plus x. Now, is this the same thing as what we started with? No, it's not. So there is no y-axis symmetry. Okay, now let's test for symmetry with respect to the origin. That means I'm going to replace y with negative y, and do the same thing we did before, replace x with negative x. Okay, now we're going to get negative y equals negative 2x cubed plus x. Now, is this the same thing as that? It actually is, because if I multiply everything by negative 1, look what I get. y equals 2x cubed minus x, and that is the same thing we started with. So there is origin symmetry. Another good graphing tool is finding points of intersection of two functions, or two graphs. So let's find the points of intersection of these two graphs. I'm going to take this first equation right here, and I'm going to solve it for y. So y is going to equal x squared plus 3. I'm going to take this x squared plus 3, and I'm going to plug it in for y in the second equation. So now the second equation becomes x minus x squared plus 3 equals 1. And I made a mistake, didn't I? That shouldn't be minus, that shouldn't be plus 3, that's a minus 3. Glad I caught that. Okay, so now I'm going to solve this for x. And that will give me my x coordinates of the points of intersection. So I've got x minus x squared plus 3 equals 1. Let's get everything over on the same side. So 0 equals positive x squared minus x minus 2. And that will factor into x minus 2 and x plus 1, which means I have two points of intersection and their x coordinates are 2 and negative 1. Well, what are the y coordinates? I'm going to take these two x-coordinates and plug them in up there to get the y-coordinates. So when x is 2, y is 2 squared minus 3, which is 1. So my first point is at 2 comma 1. And when x is negative 1, y is negative 1 squared minus 3, which is 1 minus 3, or negative 2. So that point is going to be at negative 1, comma, negative 2. Okay, last example. We can use our graphing calculators to find regression equations which model data. So these numbers are how many smartphone users there were in the United States from 2010 to 2018 in millions. And we're going to put this into our calculator and we're going to find a quadratic equation that matches that data as closely as possible. We're going to let t equals 0 correspond to 2010. And I've already entered this data into a list. To get there, you go to, you hit the stat button, you hit enter, edit, and then enter. And here's my t equals 0 to t equals 8, and these are my numbers. If you already have numbers in there, just arrow up to the top of the list, hit clear, arrow down, and it'll clear out your list for you to enter that in. Okay, now, after you've got the data put in, you're going to go to stat, and you're going to arrow over to calc, and we want to use a quadratic regression, so that's number five. Our X list is time, L1. Our Y list is numbers of users, L2. 
don't worry about frequency list. And let's store this regression equation into y1 so we can graph it later. I'm going to hit alpha f4 and I'm, y1 is already highlighted so I hit enter. Now I arrow down and we hit calculate and there it is. Okay so let me make sure this is always in front. Alright so we're going to say that y equals and my a is negative 1.23 t squared plus 31.741 t plus 62.486. Now a common mistake is that people will put x in for their answer instead of t. And this problem says that you have y and t, not y and x. Okay? Now we're supposed to use our calculator to plot the data and graph the model. And we're going to compare the data with the model. All right, so let's look at our x min is 0, our x max is 8. So we can go to the window and make that 0. Let's go 0 to 10. Okay, and then back to stat. Whoop. There we go. I'm back. Back to stat, then edit. And my y min is about 63, and my y max is 237. Okay, so let's let our y min be 0, and our y max be 250, and we'll let our y scale be 25. Okay, and then I'm going to go to stat plot which is up above y equals. I'm going to turn this on. I want to graph a scatter plot. And I hit graph. And there we go. And you can see that the little dots right here, let me drag this over. There we go. Okay, so these little dots are the actual data points. Well, Hang on. There. Okay. So these are the actual data points. Okay. And this blue curve is the quadratic model that we calculated. So it matches it pretty much exactly. Okay. Now use the model to predict the number of users in 2025. Okay. Let me get my calculator back up. And you'll notice that in y equals, there's our model. And I'd like to know what will, ha what will it give us in the year 2025. That means t equals 25. So I'm going to go to my home screen. I'm going to call up y1 by going alpha f4. And I'm going to put in 25. And according to our model, we should get pretty much... Uh, 87 million smartphone users. All right. 